duality last year, and you'd worked with it uh, on it with John Feldman. No, actually, it wasn't. Uh, no, we were supposed to work with John Feldman. Yes, um, we were supposed to work with John Feldman, and then three days before uh, we went in to do the uh, the pr production of it all, he had to cancel us last minute. No. So uh, he had a. Uh, some personal things that that came up that he would not like me to dive into. It's nothing too serious, but he he it was enough to put him on a commission for a, quite a few months. So um so we were like we drove from New York to L.A., which is across the country. We had a non-refundable two thousand dollars sublet apartment, and we're like, what the hell are we gonna do? And we reached out to the guy, who's one of my closest friends now, uh, Brandon Paddock, who we wrote Why Worry with before we even locked John Feldman in. We just had this undeniable chemistry with him. Yes, but that's who we ended up working with. Brandon Paddock, uh, Tommy English, and Matt Appleton from Little yeah. Fish. Well, first I'll fire my researcher for getting that wrong. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, so how was it like working with those people then? It was incredible. Um, it, we were working with three very talented and capable and passionate musicians and artists. And um, we owe a lot of what duality turned into be because, to them. Uh, because we also had this undeniable chemistry. It wasn't just working with producers and professionals, it was working with your close friends. And that's one of the main reasons you get in a band in the first place, is you want to work with people that you love and know, and we love and know these people. We all have this weird connection through everybody, which is cool. Like, I knew Brandon on accident because I slept on his couch, not knowing that, because I knew his roommate. And we just bumped into each other. And so our main producer ended up being a guy I bumped into. The other guy was working for John Feldman when we wrote a song with John one time. And then Matt, I would play tenor sax on Little Big Fish, and I met him uh, when we were on Warped Tour. Awesome. Um, so you used a wide range of instruments and also a little bit of acapella on your album. Mm -hmm. So how do you translate that from the recorded sessions to your live set? Well, the unfortunate part about you know being in a band of our size is you know when you see like an artist like Taylor Swift or Rihanna or, or Metallica or full orchestra, they can afford that because it's within their budget. Um, but we can't afford to bring like, a whole orchestra and choir along with us, so uh, we have to accommodate for those things by putting them in what are called backing tracks. So we all play to a click already, with a click is like a metronome, and because we play to that, um, it will always be in time with what other audio things we want to supplement our songs. So if there's an important horn line or, or, uh, or acapella thing that we can't all sing at the same time, then that'll be in there. But it really fills out the sound, and it really helps the entire transit live. So there was actually a couple of years between cinematics and duality. Um, how do you feel the band has progressed since then, and how do you feel you as a singer has progressed since then? Well, I think we've all grown an immense amount, um, especially as writers and as musicians. Um, I, I feel like with cinematics, we had a specific goal of what sound we wanted to accomplish, the eerie, aggressive, alternative sound, uh, and very heavily influenced by the orchestral uh, element. Uh, and in this album, we, I've, we just basically took all the influences that we've ever had, uh, including a, a, a huge love for the 90s pop and R&B uh, genre, and just we're focused on just writing good songs uh, with massive choruses and, and good and good post choruses and hooks and, and just solid songwriting. That's all we wanted to do was just write a good album. We didn't really, like, I, I did care, like, and I was a little nervous about what people would think about the change because I knew a change was coming. It was kind of imminent based on our mentality going into it, but I... Um, once I let go and I realized that this is the music that I want to play, then I, it was easier to just kind of go with it. And everyone else kind of fed into that, realizing that this is just us. So, I mean, a lot of fans can be a little bit iffy about changes in oh, their okay. favorite band's music, but has, has it been like really well received by you? There, I've, you know, of course, you'll see like a comment here or there. It's like, well, oh, I miss their old sound, but that doesn't matter what album you put out, it's always going to be that. Like we could have put out the same album, like literally, like the same album, and just changed some words. Like, if I miss the old album, what do they say? This word instead of that word. There's just people. What people need to realize is when you say I miss their old stuff, that album came into your life that you're referring to. That album came into your life at a very specific time, at a specific place, and it holds a, a weight of nostalgia to you. So nothing's ever going to have that feeling than that moment. You know, only only, only that experience will be that experience. So, but. Um, not enough weighing on that, because honestly, there's been like very, 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 very few people that have complained. A lot of people are really, really excited about this change. Of the era. And I'm really excited about that, because I was I was nervous at first. I, was, I wasn't sure people would think about how people would take it. But um, I, I, it couldn't have gone better, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Um, so you've released a couple of music videos already, including Why Worry. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any more plans for any other? Yeah, we have a music video out after Why Worry called Asian History. Uh, that one was a lot of fun because uh, we, like, I co-wrote and co-directed that uh, with my friend Freddie, who does my covers with me. 
uh, we actually have a budget this time, so instead of doing it for absolutely nothing, we had money that we could put into like, you know, good cameras, good lights, um, locations, and whatnot. And uh, it was cool, like, we, just like why we got like fans involved for the last scene. Um, we got these awesome backup dancers for it, really sick. Um, we have more videos coming out, I can't say for what necessarily, but um, video aspect is very important to us since we are such a theatrical band, so I'm really excited to see uh, it all come together and what people think about it. So you're saying you're a theatrical band and you also co wrote and co directed um, yeah. the Asian history one, mm-hmm. you said? Yes. Um, so, do you, have you always been? Uh, really creative with your music videos for all of them? Have you well, always I, had a hand in it? I always find that very important to me. I, music videos were one of my favorite things about you know, being like being in love with musicians and bands growing up, was how creative they could tell their story and their song. Like that's your chance. Like, you know, like, when you hear a song, you're open to interpretation. You know, you can take it how you will. But when you put a video to it, you can kind of directly tell people what it's about and it almost turn it into a movie. And I love movies. I love acting. It's a huge passion of mine. So I, um, that's my one chance to be able to merge my two biggest passions into one. And so I take full advantage of it every time. So does it feel like when you see the final product of uh, Well, it's good, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's why, I like, that's why I wanted to be so involved with the co-writing and co-directing is because I, before we've done videos where I, I would try to get involved and they would like kind of push me like, listen, I'm the director, and they would do it. And they didn't. And they would end up turning out a way that I didn't think was flattering when they could have made it way better. Uh, but that's just me being picky and having a vision for our band, you know. And so uh, I, I like it way more just to have my hand in there because I know exactly what I want it to look like. Definitely. Uh, so you also do quite a lot of covers. Uh, I know you did one of Jason Drill and. Talk to Freddie. That was yeah. with Freddie. We and him, the, the one who did uh, the Angels for Dude, did that one. Awesome. And in 2014, uh, you also did a cover of Ariana Grande's Problem. But yeah. This part. <laughs> And uh, so were you approached to do this or did you kind of say we really want to be on this album? Well actually I met the person uh, at a bar who is responsible for booking the bands for Punk Goes Pop. And I overheard one of the ba- uh, one of the bands that already got confirmed saying yo so and so is doing this cover. And so I hit him up I was like yo dude, um, we just did Punk Goes Christmas, or Punk Goes Pop's around the co- corner and we want it. Could you help us get in? And we, our, our Punk Goes Christmas co- song was the number one or number two song on their entire compilation. And so I know, I'm very confident in who we are as musicians and in our capability to deliver when it comes to something like that. And so uh, he, he also saw that in us and said yes. And so we had this list, and originally, originally we were going to do Royals um, because that was all that was up on the list. We wanted to do Problem, it was already gone, so we were shit. So we reached out to our manager and we're like, yo, is there any way you think we can get a Problem? We found that, uh, I think it was Youth in Revolt was doing um, Problem at the time. They were going to do Problem. And we offered Royals for Problem, and they wanted to switch, so we switched. And so uh, we got Problem, we really wanted that song, so that's what we did. That's awesome. Uh, you're also one of the most toured bands, like you were here earlier in the year with Prime Empire. Oh, yeah. You just, just did the, it was the Glamour Kills tour, I think? Yeah, we just finished is, our yeah. uh, US headline album. And you've got Warped really. Tour coming out as mm-hmm. well, so. And before that, we're going to Japan. Awesome. So, so we finished, so we, we just did, so this year so far has been supporting in Europe with Crown the Empire. Uh, headlining the United States, full US. Uh, we're now here for our first European headline, then we co headline in Japan, then we come back for less than a week, and then we do all of the United States Warped Tour. Slam Dunk, right? And always Slam Dunk, too, yes, thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've got that uh, one. Um, but yeah, we just want to know what makes you tour so much. Well, it's what, first of all, it's, it's what your band depends on to survive uh, financially. Uh, no one buys records anymore. It's unfortunate, but no one really does. It'd be awesome if people did, but can't change you know, the evolution of the music industry. Um, so in order to keep yourself sustained and to keep going and to be able to do these videos and these crazy things that we want to do, we have to create an income, which is one of the ways, but that's not the main reason. The main reason is because we fucking love this, you know, like we really love what we do and being on the road keeps us sane, it keeps us happy. And um, we get to pursue our passion and see the growth with our own two eyes. Yeah, and you gotta do what makes you happy. So. Exactly. But obviously, uh, with touring so much and with so many different bands, you're gonna attract all kinds of fans. Mm-hmm. Um, so, how have the crowds differed um, or progressed from, say, earlier in the year when you came with Crown the Empire to what it's been like with a couple of shows that you've already done here? Um, even just like since the album came out, the demeanor of our crowd has changed. A lot less crowd surfing and mosh pitting and more dancing. It's really cool. And singing. Oh my god, they're so loud. It's great. It's my favorite part. Um, waving your hands, clapping along. It's a lot less aggressive as far as demeanor goes. But um, as far as, as growth, it's just it's exponential. It's very noticeable. Um, we played London Electric Ballroom with Crown, and there's a good amount of people screaming the words, but we almost sold out 
um, Underworld last night. And that was just within the same year. It was a louder crowd, it was sweaty, it was fun, it was, it was great. So we're witnessing the growth uh, month by month by month. And then we're getting like, you know, we just got on the cover of Rock Sounds, like our first cover, uh, getting all these features and stuff like that. And it's, it's really, it's nice. Yeah. Um, I also saw that you guys just did a, a busking session in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we did. Uh, so how did that come about? Like, well, we have a new it? song that we wrote um, mm -hmm. in light of the, all the terrible things that are going on in the United States as far as you know, violence against you know, minorities and, and the police and uh, what they're doing and, and the fact that gay marriage is not being accepted all like nationally. It's just there's a lot of things that are bothering me. But, you know, and so we wrote a song called Wild Wild the World and we wanted a cool way to premiere it without releasing the song. So we had this idea to kind of do a buskin performance where we just kind of went out and just played a bunch of acoustic stuff and we did really well. <laughs> and then we played the new song and everyone went, it was cool was because you know, fans know who we are as people, but there were strangers walking by listening to the message of the song and would stop and like nod their head like, yeah, they, they get it, they, they understand it. That's so um, So do you have anything else to say um, about any of your plans for the rest of the year that you would like to share on? Well, we'll be releasing a lot of stuff soon, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, I can't, again, can't tell you what it is, but expect some uh, visually and audio based uh, things to be pleasing your ears and eyes soon. Uh, we will be touring nonstop, so just go to our website, setitupband.com, uh, and click on the tours tab, and you'll see all of our dates. So find something near you and come hang out.